the next match. Sting and Darby Allen against Scorpio Sky and the other page. They've got Sting back in the ring after six years. A guy who has main evented mega pay-per-views, right? This match. Um, Sting didn't embarrass himself as far as physically, and he didn't hurt himself, more importantly. And I like Darby Allen. And Scorpio Sky is a huge talent. Uh, the fucking idiot Sky's partner, the other page, he can go fucking burst into spontaneous combustion for all I care about. But you've got some talent here. Um, oh, and by the way, somebody, somebody tweeted me and said, well, don't you understand? I've said that this fucking, the other page, the secondary page, was the same one in Impact Wrestling that had a match against himself uh, on a green screen at one of their pay-per-views. And somebody tweeted, say, you don't understand, he didn't like it either because they edited it all wrong at Impact. It wasn't his fault. This fucking knock-kneed, bow-legged, slope-headed fucking cretin had a match against himself. He voluntarily got in front of a camera and shot both parts. I don't care how it was edited. It's phony horseshit, and fuck this guy. He's one step below the doll wrestlers and the child wrestlers, in my opinion, because at least they had something or someone to wrestle. He was doing it against himself. The only thing worse than that would be the Invisible Man. I thought you were going to say at least they weren't in Impact. Well, I mean, <laughs> everybody in an Impact is an Invisible Man. Anyway, so this match, guess what? They jump-started it. Uh, Sting walked in in slow motion like he was going to get a cup of coffee from the kitchen, but Darby just dove onto the fucking heels with, with reckless abandon. And they had a four-way on the floor and on the stage. Uh, Scorpio Sky suplexed Sting on the stage, and he popped up and no-sold it. And then took, why would you take that bump? Nobody was expecting to see Sting suplexed on the stage, and nobody's going to remember it tomorrow. But he popped up and took his shirt off, which was a bad move, because he hadn't been tanning. And crossbodied the heels off the stage, which was a good move, because he still got it. And now the bell rings. So see, now they're getting around it, Brian. They don't jump start every match. They just jump start and fight. And then when they finish their fighting spots, then they ring the bell to start the match. Um. Anyway, the faces tagged in and out and worked on the heels. They cut Darby Allen off and got some heat. As I mentioned, I like Darby Allen. I like Scorpio Sky. Sting was better here than he had any right to be with a bad neck and everything else. Um, but then it started falling apart. They had it the first part, but then they, cause, and I'm sorry, but it wasn't Sting's duty to keep this fucking thing together. Right? Because he's the fucking guest star here. He's the legend. Everybody else should have made sure they were on their P's and Q's to work around Sting. Did you see the part where Darby Allen gets the hot tag to Sting and the people fucking blow? They, how? Oh! And he comes in and starts a rotten comeback because the heels aren't feeding him at all. And referee Aubrey claimed she didn't see it and made him get out. Yeah, that was awkward. And the crowd immediately turned to boo and not the good boo like you no good heel boo, but boo like what the fuck was that? Even we can tell that was fucked up. She obviously, no heel was distracting referee Aubrey. The camera, the hard camera shot showed that she watched Sting tag Darby Allen and then turned around to the heels because then she realized, well, I wasn't supposed to see that. And then put Sting out when Darby Allen was laying in his own corner. She claimed she didn't see the tag. Let me take a, just divert here for a second. It's called a false tag. When the babyface has been working to the heels partner, to the heel, or babyface has been working to his corner 
to try to tag his partner and the heels are getting heat on him. But every time he gets an opening, he tries a sunset flip and he'll try to go and tag his partner. They bring him back, whatever the fuck. Finally, a false tag is when the baby face gets that tag that the people have been wanting, but the referee doesn't see it. So she puts the fresh baby face out and allows the heels behind his, behind the referee's back to fucking double team the baby face some more. You do one, maybe two of those if you're having a long set of heat and a longer match. And then finally, when the baby face does get the fucking tag and everybody sees that the referee saw it and everybody, that's the big pop. You're milking these pops. But there's important parts about this. For one thing, they set this up completely wrong in the ring because if you have the referee distracted, which they didn't, but they were supposed to, and the babyface tags his partner behind the referee's back and that partner comes in and starts making a comeback, as, as soon as he makes a shot or two against the heels, the referee has to be there to scoop him back and push him back and tell him, no, there was no tag. If the referee does that and fucking is scooting the, the baby face back and looks down and sees the baby face that tagged in the baby face corner with nobody else around him, well, there's no way they didn't tag. What you do is you let your baby face that you're getting the heat on, you let him finally make the tag and then immediately jerk or pull or throw him back. One that I always liked was when the baby face is fighting up from underneath and maybe hits the heel once and hits the heel twice and the heel's kind of staggering backwards and the baby face runs and jumps like he's going to jump over the heel, but the heel catches him in a bear hug. Just then the other heel partner steps in and draws the referee's attention. The baby face that's been caught in a bear hug, the weight and the momentum causes the heel to stagger backwards where the baby face reaches over behind his back and makes the tag to his partner. But at that point, the heel brings the baby face back into the middle of the ring and dumps him on his ass. When the referee turns around and sees the fresh baby face coming in from that tag and pickling the fucking heel once, the referee also sees the baby face that's been getting the shit kicked out of him laying in the middle of the ring, nowhere near the fucking baby face corner, and assumes there was no tag and puts the fucking guy back out. That's the way you do it. When you make the tag, not only that the referee saw, but also the baby face that made the tag lays crumpled there in the baby face corner. Well, how the fuck didn't they make a tag? You got to get that baby face back out in the middle and keep him in play in the ring. So it looks to the referee like that there was no way that they could have tagged. So they just botched this completely all up. And the crowd booed him for it, as they should have. And then they go back to getting heat on Darby Allen and nothing was happening, and then suddenly the other page just fucking pressed Darby Allen over his head, and Joe LaDuke Darby Allen over the fucking top rope and over the rail into the crowd on top of Darby Allen's brothers who were at ringside. And that was a goddamnedest looking thing you've ever seen. That was tremendous. It was incredible. It would have been a great angle for a pay-per-view match to result from, but not in the middle of the pay-per-view match. Because now everything came to a fucking halt again. Which is a good reason to reinstate the, if you throw a guy over the top rope, it's a, a disqualification if the referee sees you. That Then you could have all kinds of things you could do, but these guys wouldn't be able to have a fucking match like that. Plus, if you tease that in an angle or do it in an angle where he throws Darby over the top rope into the crowd, the next time he picks Darby up in a match, people start losing their minds thinking he's going to do it again. Yes, they could have done that on television, had everybody see it on free TV, and then fucking this match results and, all, and bring a fucking stretcher and cart Darby Allen out because he's been thrown 20 feet onto fucking people and chairs. And then when he's able to walk again, you book the match. But anyway, Darby Allen finally beat the count to get back in the ring. And then now it's really dragging. And finally, of course, he's not, he's not defeated by this. He's five foot six and 140 pounds, but by God, it's all fight. 
And finally, he gets a rear naked choke and then a flip stunner on Paige and tags Sting. Scorpio Sky fed Sting. Uh, the other Paige laid there like a sack of shit. Sting made a comeback, hit his stinger splashes, and then tagged Darby back in. And then the heel stopped the baby faces. And Sting got Scorpion Deathlock on the other page, and Sky got the ankle lock on Darby Allen, and Darby Allen and Page were slapping each other while they were in these holes, and it just had become a fucking mess by this point. And then everything came to a halt again, and Darby Allen and the other page were just down crawling, and they made simultaneous cold tags to their partners. And then Scorpio Sky and Sting face off and trade shots. And Sting missed a splash, but hit the Scorpion death drop on Scorpio Sky. They didn't even beat Paige. They beat Sky, the, the one that's worth something. One, two, three. So this match, first half was good. Second half fell a fucking part. Finish came out of nowhere. It was what we expected. But again, thanks for coming, Scorpio Sky and the other Paige. Uh, you guys are pretty much done now. So, cause I've just, I've, did I miss anything that re would have redeemed this further in my mind if I had, had seen it? It wasn't the greatest. I will say I've been more impressed with Ethan Page than you have been. I've liked him so far. I think, you know what? If he walked into OVW 20 years ago, I said, this is a good fucking athlete with good looking size. He can talk a little bit. You can do something with him. He wrestled himself in front of a green screen on a pay-per-view, so he's one of these cosplay jack-offs that's not serious about the business. He's just playing around, playing grab-ass and tickle-taint with his friends, and he can go fuck himself. That's what I think of him. Go ahead. I think he's been pretty good so far. Um, not crazy about this match. You know, I think the Cody match, for whatever reason, took a lot out of the crowd. Took a lot of the energy out of the crowd. It was a different kind of match than what they were. They they didn't know what to think. That well, wait a minute, these guys are actually wrestling. Where's our fucking cheerleading? But it took the crowd out of the show. I mean, that that's I'll tell you what took the crowd out of the show. At by the time that this match was over with, it it was two hours and forty five minutes into the pay per view, and they did a pregame show, and people have to get there an hour early. Those people have been sitting there for four fucking hours already what the fuck what i was gonna say is go ahead and say it then from the cody match on you know there's something to be said for some good nine minute matches every match can't be long and every match can't have everyone kicking out of everything have a few of those matches you have major title matches you have title changes on the show the women's title match was a title change the tag title match had its own issues but that's separately but just some of these matches, Cody and Agogo, uh, Britt Baker and Sheeta, I can understand why they didn't, but Miro and Archer, this tag match, there could have been some shorter matches. There were several good candidates for 11 minutes at under matches. You can't remember anything that happens because it all looks the same. That's why I remember the, the, the Cody and Agogo match was the only one that you could actually remember what took place and it registered that something happened rather than just guys doing everything they've ever fucking seen. And it's always the same. 